so I was gonna do a little about to head out kind of <laughs> check-in but this is the temperature right now it's 122 degrees Fahrenheit so forgive me if I if I, I'm just gonna you know I'm about to head out I'm, <laughs> I can't stay here for much longer I'll, I'll, I'll check back in I don't know how, I don't even know how this is gonna work okay I'm dying bye Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another installment of Plagued by Visions. And as you might be able to tell, of course, a, 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 a special and kind of unusual installment of Plagued by Visions. My name is Juan, and I want to do things a little differently. <laughs> I'm going to try something out uh, that I haven't done before, which is kind of a, a vlog, a, a book shopping vlog, if you want to call it that. But it's not really going to be that. <laughs> I mean, I. I got some footage uh, from the trip that I, that I made uh, to the biggest uh, bookstore in California and uh, I didn't really vlog so much as get some random footage here and there uh, but all the same I'm gonna find a way to piece it together and form it into a cohesive video about my experience because this is a place that I had been wanting to go to for so long and it did not disappoint. I had tons of fun and I want to share my experience with you all. So it's probably going to end up being me narrating what happened, giving you my story and interspersed throughout my narration, there's going to be some video clips uh, showing any relevant footage that I was able to grab. Uh, you know, vlogging is not something that I've done and quite frankly, probably something that I won't really try to do that much <laughs> because I found out that I really don't have the skill for it. And you know, when going, especially since I went to this place, which I've been wanting to go to for so long, you know, you, you kind of want to be more like in the moment, enjoy yourself, not be too bothered by, did I get the best shot? Did I get the best angle and lighting? So it wasn't really about that, but still I did manage to get some some cool footage that, that I hope to show you. And uh, you know, of course that's not your thing. I hope that at least my narration is able to keep things interesting enough. <laughs> so yeah, I went to the last bookstore in LA. Uh, the, the the name of the store is the last bookstore. It's not the last bookstore in LA by any means, uh, but it is the largest bookstore, new and used bookstore, like I said, in California. And California is a really big fucking state. So this is a really big fucking deal, obviously. And uh, it was incredible. <laughs> it was an amazing experience. There were a few letdowns that I'll get to, but nothing too major. And overall, I had a fantastic time. So I guess I'll just kind of jump into the narration. And then whenever any relevant footage comes up, it'll it'll take over the screen. <laughs> because I did manage to record everything from my road trip there to when I actually arrived and the things that I saw that were of interest. Um, and I gotta say that the trip there was a travesty in and of its own right. So. Let's start there. So I live in an area in California that is in the middle of the Southern California desert. And if you wanna to get to any bookstore, you're going to have to undertake, uh, you know, at least an hour long drive, any which way you look at it. Uh, going up north to LA was a three hour and 40 minute drive, almost four hours, depending on traffic and you know, LA traffic is infamous all across the country, but we, we lucked out, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it was a Saturday, so maybe that has something to do with it. So yeah, my area is lacking in any bookstores and it's always such a chore to try to make it to any bookstore. And uh, the, the drive there was excruciating as you saw from my beginning clip. It gets up to like 120 degrees Fahrenheit out here. It is absolutely monstrous in human weather. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I spend most of my time indoors with my AC on. Uh, the, the thing I appreciate most about my home region, I guess, is that nobody can really judge you for being a couch potato because that's really pretty much all you can be. <laughs> so driving up north, you'll see I live in a very rural part of California. And it is, it might be a very, very different image of California than what most people are used to picturing. You know, everything is mostly vast fields, empty lots, you know, desert dirt. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite a travesty, you know, cars break down all the time because of the heat. 
um, it is a nightmare. It is impossible to keep a clean car around these parts because everything is covered in dust and dirt. But it wasn't too bad. And you know, th there is something kind of pretty about the, the desert landscape uh, in moderation <laughs> in passing, but living here, it does kind of wear on you. But yeah, we, we live in a we live in an area that is kind of, um, you know, it has a very high unemployment rate, a very high poverty rate. Uh, and uh, all kinds of, of social ills plague this area. And, and on top of that, you know, we're lacking in any kind of substantial bookstore. I mean, there is or was, I'm not sure, a, a bookstore in the downtown, uh, you know, a city over. Uh, <laughs> not in my city, uh, but, but one time I went there and they had like, no lie, like three bookshelves and two of them were all religious books. So no, no, uh, <laughs> not really much of a of an assortment or selection, which is unfortunate as a book lover. I, I try to make do with what I got nearby. There, there are nearer bookstores in San Diego and in Arizona. You don't have to make this trek up north. And, and even up north, I think you could come across some bookstores somewhere in, in Palm Springs or Riverside County or San Bernardino County. But of course, I was on a mission to visit the biggest bookstore. And then another uh, couple of things of note on the way there is that the, there is a border patrol checkpoint. Any which way you go, this is something that maybe a lot of people might not be used to uh, or may have never seen before in their lives, may have never even seen the border patrol agent in their life, but they are very prominent. They're always patrolling my city because I live in a, in a border area. Um, you know, the, 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 the border has become highly militarized and, and been a constant subject of more and more surveillance over the years uh, as, as you know, these uh, tensions with Mexico have escalated. Uh, and it's, it's always interesting you know, to see that even out here, <laughs> you know, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere, we have a modicum of militarization and surveillance um, that is frankly a little bit disturbing to see no matter which way. And then another thing of note is that on the way up north uh, to Riverside County and then, then eventually LA County is the Salton Sea. And it's this uh, water formation uh, in the middle of the desert that is quite a an, a, an ecosystem an anomaly. Uh, it's, um, it's a salt sea, it's a salt water sea. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, increasingly contaminated and dried up over the years uh, because it was not a natural uh, body of water. It was, it very much came about as, as a result of uh, people, you know, messing around with the nearby rivers and canals. And I don't really know the history too much to be too accurate on the matter, but uh, yeah, it, it eventually uh, formed into what it is. And it is slowly drying up. And, and sort of a, a downer, uh, semi-apocalyptic story about the Salton Sea is that some experts predict that eventually, years down the line, it will completely dry up. And the coat of dust and sand that will be left over will be blown over uh, by the wind because it's, it's a substantial body of water. It's very, very large. And then all that dust is eventually going to cover the entirety of my home region and we'll see what happens then <laughs> it's not gonna happen anytime soon but just the thought of you know that my home region being a, a temporary stay that that is constantly threatened by changes in the ecosystem is something that is kind of a downer but just thought it bore mentioning <laughs> and then you can see uh, on the way there there's all these random desert towns like these interspersed uh, almost uh a comical uh, pantomimes of suburbia that are spread out here and there and it's something that that always sort of fascinates me just kind of thinking who lives here in such isolation i was just thinking this because we made a stop at a gas station that's on the way there and i thought uh, who where do these people get groceries is this where they come uh how do these people keep themselves entertained or you know like isolation has been such a big topic but these people uh, have lived in isolation pretty much the whole lives and and, and it is a you know a, a, a it was a weird juxtaposition that came to my mind as i was driving to the biggest bookstore in california and traversing this space that is full of poverty and isolation uh, lots of racial tensions this is the sort of more um, 
conservative area of California. I know California is often seen <laughs> as this uh, liberal paradise. And I'm here to tell you that it's not the case at all, especially the more east you go. And that is the area that I live in and, you know, racism and, and uh, these are sort of contentious uh, <laughs> issues and, and various forms of tension always arise. And, and, and there's a high levels of ignorance and, and lack of education in these areas. And I just thought it was so interesting. It's almost uh, therapeutic, but also bittersweet and also just plain unsettling, you know, in order to, to traverse the area in order to try to come across some kind of a, a bookstore, some kind of a, you know, symbol of, of culture and intellectualism, you have to make it through the sobering reminders of how much, uh, you know, a lack of resources and education sort of weighs down on my community. And of course, that is not to look down on people who don't read in this area. That's something that I've said before on this channel, you know, there, there's a high levels of snobbishness and elitism around the topic of literature uh, that frankly I don't subscribe to. You know, I don't look down on people who don't read because they have their own reasons to not read. But nonetheless, I thought it bore mentioning, you know, it's an interesting sort of contrast. Uh, and it's something that always comes to my mind whenever I make this trek up north or west or east. And uh, something to keep in mind, I'm, you know, trying to, mo most of all, I'm trying to give you more of a flavor as to the area that I live in and the constant things that assault my thoughts now and then <laughs> when it comes to the panorama and the people that live around here. And then uh, one last thing that I want to mention about my journey there, I know I've spent more than enough time talking about this, but uh, you know, there's there's this town called Cabazon that uh, is also a, a, a middle of the desert town, but there's these dinosaurs <laughs> that, are, that are on the way there that are visible from the road. I managed to get a, uh, a bit of footage of them, or my friend did. Um, and that's something that I probably should mention. None of this footage was taken by me. It was taken by my friend. I did go with a couple of friends. Uh, so don't worry. My hands were safely on the steering wheel. <laughs> All of this footage was uh, expertly taken by my good friend slash cameraman. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this footage, uh, th these dinosaurs have been there for so long. Uh, if any of you have seen, uh, I can't remember which Pee Wee Herman movie it is. The first or the second one. But in one of them. There's a scene, you know, with these dinosaurs. Uh, and, and they've been there ever since I was a kid and we made road trips up to LA because I used to have some family that lived up in LA. I remember always staring at these dinosaurs. And they're always, they're the one constant in my life. <laughs> and it's always a pleasure to see them. And I, it was even more of a pleasure this time around going up because I saw that they had dressed them up. They had painted one of them pink and it had a heart painted on it. And the other one was wearing a pride shirt. Um, and I think, I think at Palm Springs, which is nearby, is becoming an increasingly sort of a LGBT friendly community or something along those lines. Um, so it's nice to, it's nice to see, it's interesting to see how the panorama is changing up here. Uh, but, but the dinosaurs remain a constant and they are icons and I love them. <laughs> so finally, arriving at the bookstore. Uh, let me tell you, let me walk you through my experience there. Uh, traffic was, like I said, not nearly as terrible as I thought it was going to be. And we were able to find relatively cheap parking. Uh, we, we went into a parking structure that was a couple of streets away. And it was a $7 flat rate and plenty of parking space in there. Again, might be because of COVID, might be because it's the weekend, I'm not sure. But in my mind, shouldn't weekends be even more chaotic? Probably because of COVID. But <laughs> at this time around, you know, it wasn't... It wasn't hard at all to get parked and get moving. And, and the little walk uh, was enjoyable because I was able to get a couple of shots of the, of the LA streets and the LA buildings. And, and I do like the look of LA. I, I wouldn't live there. <laughs> but visiting is something else. And it's, it's always nice to see, you know, that sort of the iconic skyline and, and, you know, going into the city and all these old, old buildings. Uh, in downtown LA, they give you that sort of Raymond Chandler flavor. <laughs> uh, it was very enjoyable. I had I had actually not been to LA in quite a while, so it was it was fun. Uh, and then, of course, we arrive at the last bookstore, um, and then we make our trick inside. Uh, I have to say, uh, my initial thoughts were overwhelming. There are a lot of books there's a lot of people in there and there was a lot of sections in there 
uh, and everything. I will say, uh, not really a detriment, but something that was that made the whole experience even more chaotic. <laughs> but not in a not in a way that wasn't enjoyable. But uh, and I understand why. You know, to try to separate books between old and new, you know, used and new, uh, would be kind of impossible for such a substantial selection. Uh, but you know, the the used books were mixed with the new books, and so you, you're kind of looking at them uniformly. Uh, and the sections are separated, uh, the, you know, very uh, logistically, uh, very um, in a very cohesive and understandable way. Uh, you know, the, there's uh, of course there's some are separated by genres, but downstairs, it was mostly you know by topic like literary fiction. They even had this this vault full of like uh, antique books. Uh, they have a, they had another section of rare books that I sadly only heard about after the fact from a friend who's been here. Uh, for you know more than a few times over the years uh, but uh, there's always next time <laughs> and then there's sections there's even a I, I didn't get any footage of it but there's a, a record section like vinyl section um, but I don't really collect vinyl but if any of you are interested in that they do have that <laughs> uh, there's sections of you know, cookbooks of course uh, uh, self-help um, there, there was even like pet care and it was divided by pet type it was like dogs cats reptiles <laughs> so that was fun uh you know there's critical race theory like there's a uh, scholarly theory philosophy uh you know there's gay romance <laughs> there was a section called paranormal romance which was pretty funny <laughs> that that's a whole genre uh and and you know this was downstairs they had a section for manga now my friends and i are uh, self-admitted weeaboos so we were ecstatic to see that <laughs> uh, uh, but they do have a manga section and it's it's fairly small but they have you know pretty interesting selection nonetheless and, and they also had comics of course graphic novels and they even have these uh, little reading areas uh, for people to sit down and read with comfortable chairs and um, it was a uh, very sort of overwhelming to all take all in especially I, th I think it was because it was my first visit uh, and uh, you know I, it was just it was just kind of like a where do I even start but but I think if I go a second time which I definitely plan on doing I'm gonna be a little more prepared and I, know, I will know exactly where to look and, and what to look for <laughs> but as a first time visit um, quite overwhelming now, another thing that you will notice is that there were uh, quite a few very interesting uh, art installations that are, that are you know, book centered. And, you know, there's some overhanging uh, structures on the walls. This is a two story building and it's a very sort of uh, a towering building. And, and, and everything is so beautifully decorated that I feel, you know, I have I had some friends with me uh, who who are not readers at all they went with me because they support my weird habit i guess but they're not interested in books at all and they still had a, a ton of fun so even if if you have family members or if you have loved ones who are not into books they will be entertained here because there's like i said lots of art installations lots of pretty things to look at uh, and it's a very involving and, and it's uh, quite a thing to behold and, and it's it's tons of fun to just walk through it and, and see everything and and but that was kind of like a uh Another semi detriment, but not really, is that I was so overtaken by all these structures. You know, there's this amazing tunnel that's made out of books that you can walk through. And uh, of course, you <laughs> it's not meant to be for book browsing, but you know, the overall experience of just being surrounded by books, sort of swallowed by books. You know, there's this other little um, peek through window that's made out of books that was also nice. I got a, I got a nice picture, <laughs> you know of 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 uh, myself my friend took a picture of me sort of peeking out through there it looks really cool uh and you know it's a very uh, it's a very insta worthy store <laughs> in that regard uh lots of cool things lots of interesting sort of uh visual and, and physical structures and, and uh but uh where i was getting at in terms of how it could be a detriment not really but kind of is that I was much more involved with you know trying to take it all in that eventually actual book browsing became secondary <laughs> like I wasn't really looking at the books and titles and genres that much I was just kind of like holy shit there's so much there's upstairs there's downstairs there's all kinds of pretty art things to look at and it was wonderful of course but 
uh, uh, you know, like I said, my first visit, it, it was bound to be overwhelming. It's the biggest bookstore in California. Uh, but like I said, nothing that a second more uh, astute visit wouldn't remedy. Now upstairs, it's a mixture of uh, these uh, art uh, sort of little mini shops uh, and uh, art displays, sort of art galleries. There was a lots of cool artwork. I'll try to put up some pictures of that up here. <laughs> Very interesting artwork all around. My favorite piece was this one painting. <laughs> it was a chainsaw and it said, Celine Dion tried to kill me. Uh, it was $120, I swear. I thought about buying it. <laughs> I liked it that much, but I didn't have the budget to, to buy such masterful works. But you know, if I go back and I have more money on me and it's still there, um, it might just make its way home <laughs> with me. Uh, but it was so, so cool. You know, they, they, they offer so much space uh, for, for artists to sell their, their artwork and their arts and crafts. And, and I did buy something from one of them, from one of these vendors. Uh, so, so I thought that it was cool. You know, it's a, it's a support of the arts all around and, and and that's something that i really enjoyed is that there, there was just so much um you know involvement with the fun aspect of a, of a uniquely decorated and structured bookstore but at the same time you know supporting other forms of art and, and, and giving them such a prominence you know within their own space it was a really cool thing to see uh, and you know the the artists themselves are the people selling the art so so you get to meet them I didn't want to bother them too much, but, but I did enjoy a lot of the art that I saw there. And now, uh, the stairs leading up uh, to the upstairs section are so cool because each step has the name of a genre on it because the upstairs is where all the genre fiction is along with some history books uh, and, and other kind of miscellaneous things. Uh, so going upstairs, uh, the, the, the selection becomes even more labyrinthian. I did get lost and confused a couple of times. It's that big and it's that rife with shelves and selection. Uh, and uh, it was a little bit confusing to navigate, but eventually I got the hang of it. It wasn't too bad. It was just like, okay, let me center myself. <laughs> and the upstairs is where uh, that awesome book tunnel and that book window are. So there's, you know, there's a lot of cool visual things downstairs, but upstairs it's even better. So if you're interested in that, head upstairs first and then, and then you can, you know, take a little more time with browsing the books elsewhere. Now, you all know me, and you all probably know what I immediately went after, <laughs> and that was the horror section. And it's the one thing that I was dreading the most, because in my experience, you know, I've been to, obviously, I hadn't ever been to a bookstore as big as this one, but I've been to a couple of, you know, pretty large bookstores around California, and uh, it's always, you know, fantastic to see, you know, any bookstore and their selection, but always also a kind of a disappointment because horror sections are usually either lacking completely, like there just isn't one, or it's the smallest section in the entire bookstore. And the selection is usually atrocious. And, and as a horror lover, I suffer a lot because of that. <laughs> And I'm sure a lot of you out there can relate. And now, how did the horror section fare here in the last bookstore? Well, for starters, they had one. And that was already like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> as long as they have one. But it was actually, I, to me, obviously I'm biased. But to me, it was the coolest section of the bookstore. So from what I gather, this building used to be a bank, perhaps? Or something like that. Because it has... It has vaults and, and, the, and the horror section, like the antique section downstairs, is located inside a vault. And the atmosphere that they put into building up this horror section is magnificent. The lighting is like this dim sort of purple, kind of like what I have going on here. <laughs> I guess I've been paying a tribute to the last bookstore this whole time. Um, but you know, it's, it's in this sort of cavernous confined vault and you step in and, and you know it's, it's it's very sort of isolated from the rest it's a dark and, and mysterious in there and, and so i enjoyed that quite a lot there's 
horror decorations. There was this big skull in the corner. There's some crows and, and other things hanging about. And uh, it, it was great. <laughs> I was just like, I am so happy right now. <laughs> but this is where I will say <laughs> another detriment, semi-detriment. But if you're going to visit this store and you are, I mean, I was escaping 120 degree weather. So it didn't wear on me that much. <laughs> but if you're somebody who is very sensitive to heat and stuffiness and warmth, I suggest you visit this store in the winter because there is no air conditioning. And like I said, the horror section is inside a vault. It gets incredibly stuffy and hot in there. Not unbearable, but definitely uncomfortable. So keep that in mind. And, and as you know, it was this section that I spent the most time in. So by the time I got out of there, I was soaked in sweat, but it wasn't that bad. Now the selection, of course, as anybody can relate with any horror section in any bookstore, Stephen King just has to take up an entire bookshelf by default. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about that. Well, you know, like his stuff is already so widely attainable everywhere. Like why? Like we get it. I get it. You know, the, the purpose of a bookstore is at the end of the day to sell books. And Stephen King is perhaps the most well-known name in the genre. And so they're going to put those Stephen King books there for people to buy and be the first thing that they see. But, you know, the rest of the section kind of suffers in comparison because <laughs> It takes up such a substantial space in an already small section. And yeah, you know, like I said, like the horror section here was the smallest section in the entire bookstore, which was a downer, but not too bad because even then it was bigger than most horror sections, or maybe in fact, it was bigger than any horror section I've ever seen in a bookstore. Uh, so mixed feelings about it, but overall I did find something incredibly cool in there that I actually had been wanting to buy. And I'll be showing you my haul momentarily, don't worry. And then another thing that, uh, you know, it really uh, kind of uh, made me, it ticked me off a little bit, <laughs> was that, as you know, I'm doing the Read Every Book by Jack Ketchum challenge. And so I've been looking for more and more Jack Ketchum books to purchase. They did not have a single Jack Ketchum book. And I was very disappointed because of that <laughs> to see Mr. Ketchum be so snubbed by the last bookstore but I'll forgive him because everything else was great uh, but it was just cool to browse be in there it was all about the atmosphere and I feel like overall you know if, if you're gonna go there go there for the atmosphere go for the experience because it's tons of fun to just be in such a in such a bookish place <laughs> in every sense of the word uh, you know tons of fun unique experience and and I had a blast. So yeah, uh, you know, the upstairs, wonderful experience. You can get lost in there, literally. <laughs> uh, and the downstairs is so beautiful, so cozy. Like I said, they have those reading sections. It was tons of fun. Like I said, I was having trouble, you know, with the whole juggling things like, you know, taking the overwhelming nature of everything in and, and trying to record and vlog. And, and like, I didn't manage to get as much footage as I would have liked. And, but you know, most of all, I try to just, okay, Eventually, I just put my phone away and I was like, let's just have fun. Let's just go around. Let's, you know, be in the moment. And that's mostly what I did. And, and it was tons of fun. Definitely will be going there again. Can't say when, but hopefully I, I will have a bigger budget <laughs> uh, by that time. And, and take it from me. You know, I, I had to drive four hours to and from uh, and, uh, you know, traverse the treacherous summer heat go through that uncomfortable experience <laughs> and even then i will tell you it was absolutely worth it and the last bookstore is absolutely worth your time and it has my recommendation behind it it truly lived up to the name of being the biggest bookstore in california and so far it is the best bookstore that i have ever been to and i had tons of fun now rewind everything back you know like i said we, we went through <laughs> we went through that trek and then we drove back we, we did do a couple of other things up in LA. We went to Little Tokyo. Like I said, we're weeaboos that I mentioned that. <laughs> so we had tons of fun there. There's this huge anime and manga stores there. And, and you know, we ate, it was tons of fun. It was good to, you know, go out, <laughs> which hadn't happened in a while. Uh, and, you know, be among friends. It was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. It was a great uh, celebration. And, and, you know, like I said, would definitely do it again and now you know the moment you've all been waiting for or maybe not i don't know <laughs> but uh what did i get so like i said um 
I, I wasn't really, I was kind of in a budget <laughs> and you know, I, I was mostly going for the experience. You know, I wasn't really going to like haul a fuck ton of books by any means. I just wanted to see the place and take it all in and even that was worth it. Uh, but I did buy a couple of things and I found some really cool things, like I said, and I'm gonna show them to you. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, if you're going there for like thrift shopping finds and stuff, you know, finding rare books, like I said, there is a rare book section that apparently I missed. So I can't say exactly what is in there, but you know, they, they do have a large like new selection. Uh, and uh, you know, of course people are always like, well, you know, why even go when I can just buy that off? Of, you know Amazon or just buy it online and I say well you know you get to support an extremely fucking awesome place <laughs> that really needs every bit of help that it can get and so I, I was happy to buy these full price I don't even care I just wanted to support the store and uh, let me show you what I got so let's go ahead and uh, get into this little bag uh, the first thing that I have on here is not a book um, but this is the thing that I mentioned to you before that I got at one of those little uh, art uh, mini shops in the upstairs section dedicated to art. <laughs> and, and it's this, um, it's a, it's a notebook, um, the notebook, <laughs> but uh, the art, the, the cover is artwork by the phenomenal artist that was there, her own original artwork. Uh, and let's go ahead and plug her. Uh, her name is, uh, I, don't know if, I don't even know if you can see that. Uh, her name is Liz Houston. I'll put her up here and I'll, I'll put up her, her Instagram as well. Uh, phenomenal uh, artist. Her visuals uh, were incredible. They, they were like the more horror themed. Not not really like, but you know, uh, she had tarot cards, her own designs of tarot cards in there and crystals and, and sort of darker uh, themed art. And you know, I'm all about that. <laughs> and uh, I was happy to support her by buying this beautiful beautiful note notebook with her own art on it so wonderful and i'll definitely be use this be using this i mean you always need a notebook and now that i've been doing booktube i've needed notebooks more than ever i've been really burning through them with my notes for videos and stuff like that but, but that one is going to be reserved for particularly fancy note taking <laughs> and now let's get into the actual books that i bought I got three books uh, and they are all awesome and magnificent in their own way. So this first one that I got was my priced fine. <laughs> this is the priced fine for the day. Uh, it, this is the one thing that I got from the horror section. And this was something that had been recommended to me by one of my viewers slash friends, uh, JM Casey, co-host of the Chrononauts Science Fiction Literature Podcast. Uh, of course, I'll be plugging his info down in the description. Uh, but uh, J.M. Casey, he is a fan of short stories. And, and, and he, we've, we've gotten in a, in a, in a few uh, friendly arguments over, <laughs> you know, the, 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 um, the optimal form for horror. He believes that horror's optimal form is the short story. And he's always recommending all sorts of wonderful short stories to me. And one of the collections that he recommended to me was The Dark Descent. Uh, edited by David G. Hartwell. Uh, this is The Evolution of Horror has stories by Clive Barker, Shirley Jackson, Ray Bradbury, Stephen King, John Collier, and Joyce Carol Oates, and many others. Harlan Ellison is in here. Uh, Sheridan Le Fanu is in here. H.P. Lovecraft is in here. I was actually so happy that I, that I found this because I had actually been looking for this. I had placed a couple of bids on it on ebay which thankfully i didn't win and this usually sells used this version sells used for about 20 to 25 dollars from what i've seen uh and uh, I, I was able to find this at the last bookstore for five dollars and uh, it's an amazing condition you can see the, the spine is intact everything uh unfor there was an accident where um it got bent on the way there but that's my fucking fault and it, I don't really care too much about things like that. But yeah, a fantastic condition of a fantastic horror anthology uh, recommended by a, a good friend of mine, JM. <laughs> and I'm able to finally have it. I will definitely be going through its contents. It looks amazing. And inside of it, as you can always find, curious different uh, e ephemera um, inside of uh, used books. I found a business card belonging to a Howard Marcus. 
I don't even know if Howard Marcus is still in business, but if you need construction documentation services in the um, Palm Springs area, we, we're gonna get, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and give Mr. Marcus a shout out. And there was another weird thing in here, believe it or not, it was a, a, a plane ticket um, of somebody flying in from Argentina, which is so weird. And this is from, it doesn't have a date on it, so I don't know when it's from, but yeah. I always love finding weird random things like that in, in used books. It's always an adventure in and of itself. And the other two books that I got were not used, these are new, like I said, paid full price for them. But who cares because i bought them at the last bookstore in downtown la one of these is an author that i've expressed before i'm not really into his fiction but this is not fiction uh, this is the conspiracy against the human race by thomas ligoti uh this is a a non-fiction book this is right here uh, exploring various domains of similarly disturbing effect like philosophy literature neuroscience other fields of study and everything has to do with uh, grappling with the brutal reality. We're living a meaningless nightmare and anyone who believes otherwise has simply fallen under the spell of an optimistic fallacy. So, so Thomas Ligotti apparently at his nihilistic best. I, and like I said, I'm not a fan of his fiction, but I'm down to give his nonfiction a try. I've heard great, great things about this book. It has been recommended before to me in my most disturbing books series. So I look forward to finally jumping into it and seeing what it's all about and then the the third and final book that i bought there was the marbled swarm by dennis cooper as you all know i have become quite a big fan of dennis cooper uh, and this year uh, this this year I, I believe in january i left i read my first uh, dennis cooper book which was the sluts and if you saw my mid-year freak out book tag you know that that's been my favorite read so far of the year and he's quickly become one of my favorite authors this is one of his newest works um i have no idea what, <laughs> what it's about the the description in the back is mystifying as hell and i'm able to glean nothing from it but it's dennis cooper and we're gonna support him no matter what <laughs> and uh, even if the book sucks i'm glad to support him and uh, just, just to be able to say that I walked into a bookstore and I bought a book by Dennis Cooper. It's not something you get to say every day, but, but I, I was happy to find this. And, and also um, was happy that, you know, to see him there because Dennis Cooper is a big figure in California literature. He is from LA. Well, he's from LA County. He's from Pasadena, but he is from the area. So it's so nice to see him being represented in, in his home region in some capacity. And of course, I'm happy to support him. He's incredible. If you haven't read anything by Dennis Cooper yet, you are truly missing out on some of the most haunting LGBT nightmares that I have ever experienced. <laughs> so that's what I got. That's my experience. That, that was my journey through the last bookstore. I, I hope you enjoyed this. I don't even know if it's entertaining or not, but uh, you know, it was quite the journey. It was quite an experience. I had tons of fun. I would definitely do it again. Uh, let me know if you've ever been to the last bookstore in LA and what your thoughts were on it. Uh, let me know what the biggest bookstore in your area is and, and how much do you like it. Let me know your gripes with the constant snubbing of horror <laughs> in bookstore sections. Uh, or let me know if you're like me and you don't have any bookstores nearby in your area. And it's always a travesty trying to find one because believe me, I feel you completely. We're in this together. <laughs> So yeah, that, that was a, another one of my celebrations for reaching 2,000 subscribers, sort of a different kind of video and a celebration for myself. I thought, you know, whenever I reach this milestone, I'm going to fucking go to that biggest bookstore in California. And I did. And I had a blast. So hope you enjoyed this. I <laughs> hope you're all doing well. Uh, continue to stay safe and I will see you in the next installment, whatever that might be. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Y'all know I love and appreciate you all.